Welcome to Midday Australia, and here's your host, Ray Button. Thank you very much. Disposable wives, we've called this segment. Uh, now, you've been married for 15 or 20 years when one day your husband walks out into the arms of another, usually younger woman. We all know uh, women, that's happened to, it may have happened to you. What went wrong? Is it a so-called midlife crisis? Well, Jan and Michelle have been through it. They're here to talk about it, along with the uh, psychologist, Dr. John Buttsworth. Would you please welcome them? Welcome, folks. But, um, Midlife crisis, uh, Jan, you and your husband were married for 19 years. Yes. Um, you say that he displayed what have become the classic symptoms. What happened? <laughs> yes, I didn't realise until afterwards. Um, I think perhaps you don't want to face up to it. He bought Pierre Cardin underpants. He uh, Underpants? Yes! <laughs> Pierre Cardin, $9 a pair. <laughs> um, he, he treated me as if I annoyed him all of a sudden for a period of about eight months, which I couldn't understand what it was um, and I'd ask him I actually asked him all the questions is it your business are you not well is it another woman and each thing he denied um, yes so you suspected uh, something was up but you didn't suspect an affair no I didn't suspect anything was up I loved him he loved me all right. I didn't suspect anything was up 19 years marriage two grown-up children or teenage children two teenage children um, uh, now looking back were you naive not to have seen the signs I am naive mm. I was naive. Who was the other woman? A 19-year-old girl who was the secretary, his secretary. All right. Now, Michelle, your husband uh, left you for a good friend of yours, um, of the both of you? Well, a friend of his, an acquaintance of mine. Like a younger and a, and a business associate? Yes, that's right. How long ago was that? Uh, two and a half years. Now, but you've only recently started to tell friends that he'd gone. Why, why were you reluctant? Um, I wonder. <laughs> Were you embarrassed? Uh, Ashamed? Um, yes, yes, perhaps both of those. Mm. But you understand the same question as Jan. I mean, could you understand why after such a long relationship and such a long marriage that uh, he would give you up for a younger version? No. A younger model, I'm sorry? No, no, I couldn't um, at all. And now can you, three years later? Uh, no, I couldn't. I can't. John, what are we listening to here? I mean, you deal with this as a psychologist, you deal with this obviously all the time. Uh, We're listening to two classic stories, actually, Ray. That, they um, are classic stories, aren't they? Yeah, very classic stories. And I think what, uh, what Jan says is, is, uh, is very true, that, that it's extremely devastating to be, to be deserted by a loved one. And, um, and in, that, in that early stages of devastation, and early stages is really a year or so, it's very, very hard to get it to get it all into understanding. But once you tend to look back on it, you can see for months, if not years beforehand, there is always some breakdown in the mind-body communication. And, um, and you've seen that as you look back. And I think Michelle is in a much earlier stage. I think Michelle's very bravely come along today because she hasn't started talking about it yet. Um, Jan talked about it right away, and that's the most important thing to do. When these things happen to you, you need to talk about what's happening to you and there are two feelings you need to talk about the first feeling is the hurt and the sadness you need to cry and not only on your own but you need to have someone else to cry with and secondly the other feeling is anger you, the anger is just so much part of it and you, it needs to have some expression and they're, both, your, they're both normal crying and anger are both normal human reactions not only normal they're essential to you getting over a situation. You really get into actually grieving, which is the, the sadness and the anger, and also get into looking at the positive things, because once you get the past out of you, you open up a whole new aspect in yourself to bring new positive things in. Do you, I mean, you can be, you've got to be objective as the, mm. the scientist, if you like, in this thing, but, uh, but how much do you think it's the boredom of the fact that you become too familiar with each other? How much has sex, the sex life of the couple, got to do with this, if that becomes boring? Well, I, th I, th I, think, I think both are important, because uh, in any union's a mind-body union. And there needs to be a mutual interest in each other's mind. In other words, what each other does each with, what each other does with their day. And there needs to be a mutual interest in each other's body. 
And it's in, the, it's in the body section, I find, where it very commonly breaks down most because although we've got a general knowledge that men and women feel differently about each other, um, we often don't put it into... Are different. No, they feel differently about our bodies. Okay. We, we, women, a woman's feeling of her femininity is in her, tends to be in her whole body, in her face, in her breasts, in her thighs and buttocks. Um, a man's feeling of his sexuality, of his masculinity, is much more focused. It's in his penis. <laughs> And <laughs> well, don't, don't beat around the bush here, John. I mean, get to the. I think. We but it's do. important to know that. Because... Jan said they think with the two. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Uh, I... No, you both agree. Would yes. you agree that they think with it? Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the audience seems to agree. <laughs> Um, but the, I, the important thing I, I, about knowing about this is, is that to maintain a marriage, to maintain a relationship, a woman needs to attend to a man's feeling of masculinity, not just in his mind, but in his body, and that's basically appreciating his mind and his penis. All right, well... <laughs> Pat, uh, on the phone... Uh, very quickly, we're almost out of time, but would you take your husband back after six years? I still care a great deal for him. Michelle? I wouldn't have him back. You wouldn't have him back, OK. I don't think so. Michelle? Um, no, I wouldn't, no. No question. No. All right, I John, think finally. I think that's important, that, um, that I think the only way one can get on with one's life, if such a, a devastating thing happens to one, is one has to make a choice. One has to choose to either put the past behind you and say, no, I won't have that person back. Because unless you make that choice, you're living a life in total limbo. You're tormenting yourself with hopes. And that's what leads to people becoming depressed. They're tormenting with the hopes of what could be while they're not getting on enjoying the life that they could be doing as Jan's described that she is. Right. So one has to cut, cut from the past and start concentrating on the present and the future. All right, thank you for that. We wish you well too, Jan and Michelle. Thank you for talking to us. Obviously there are lots and lots, lots of women lots. who are simply out there in exactly the same situation and would relate to what you said. Thank you for that.